how you come down. again relax time what did we do today woke Sarah up at five o'clock this morning and we had some other friends another friend's boat everybody went out fishing and we caught 25 salmon this morning nothing too overly huge let a whole pile go that was pretty good now Sarah's got to go home and I have to pick up seven people tonight at 10 30 at night and ferry them with my boat across the other side of the inlet where they've rented a house for the next three days and then we're going to be giving her again Whew. but anyway quick thought quick thought of what i was mentioning last time i had a video i was really been thinking about this too about how to change our entire existence for the better so obviously the the uh, no good doers they can't do absolutely anything without our money. They can't do nothing. They can't start wars. They can't steal it. They can't do anything without our money. And wouldn't that be fun to chop them at the ankles by the entire co continent to North America, at least, to start? Shut her down. Now, you think if we did successful, let's just say, it's like a fantasy in a way, but maybe not, because it all starts, everything starts with an idea, right? Wouldn't that be freaking awesome? If the idea and the movement started here and it actually went creeping and it worked, it would work. You just have to give everybody confidence. But anyway, let's just picture, let's just picture a community, a country, the people managed to organize, band together and chop the criminals off at the ankles by defunding them. Right? It would be easy. A lot of people would be scared, be worried. But as long as we went back to taking care of each other like a real actual community is supposed to, like we like we've been brainwashed to think we still are doing, um, it work out. But then, once we cleared up the bullshit, then how would you get people to um, throw down for your community again? Because once people realize they don't have to give money, then it'd be tough to get everybody to give money again, wouldn't it? Sounds a little confusing, but maybe not. So, there would have to be a way to do that. I mean, let's face it, we all want to exist and have a good time, a fun time, and exist in a positive, happy way. So, obviously, we would have to fund, you know, our, we, have, we would have to fund everything that takes care of us, right? Takes care of where we live, takes care of each other, takes care of our children, takes care of the future, the environment, our food source, making sure that everybody's freaking happy and rocking it out. I don't think it would take too long for people to start throwing down for that again, right? I'm just, I'm trying to picture what would happen if we actually did it, right? We actually did it. We shut her down. We, 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 we withheld the funds and chopped the monsters off at the freaking ankles instantly. What would happen next, right? I guess we probably, probably then some very intelligent, kind, motivated, smart, good people would possibly see that fighting for the rights of each one of us and actually going into the so-called political arena, let's, let's call it the, uh, the leadership zone, wouldn't be that bad of an investment of time of life as compared to what it would be right now. I mean, right now, the only people getting into politics right now are monsters, right? It's unfortunate, but maybe then Maybe then if all the people chop those people off, those monsters off the ankles, maybe then the good people, the intelligent good people, would see that position as attractive again. I've got next to no sleep. I hope my ramble's making sense. Let's see, what do you guys think? What does everybody think about that? Motivating 
start with a, a city, a state, a province, a country, whatever. Start small and make it grow and withhold funds indefinitely, immediately and indefinitely until all wars are stopped, all monsters are out of power, and we focus on people being healthy and happy. All right. Anyway, I'm babbling. Let's get some more voices heard here. I gotta have a nap. Now there's a whole pile. I'm inside, it's foggy and windy out there and chilly, a little noisy, so here we go. This is titled, Just Some Thoughts. Uh-oh, I just laid some down. All right. Steve, I've studied the Bigfoot phenomenon along with all other subjects, too taboo for the normal folk. I want to mention a few things that have stuck with me over the years that I believe help paint a bigger picture. All right. Ben Rich, former head of Skunk Works, later in life spoke of consciousness being a key to interstellar and inter interdimensional travel. He is quoted with saying, we have the technology to take E.T. home. And always spoke of these topics as one thing and not separate theories. Secondly, is Joe McMoneagle, who you must research if you're not familiar. He recently did a six-hour podcast. Wow. He is the world's most reliable remote viewer and has trained himself to leave his body. 17 different intelligence agencies since the 60s have sought out his services to find missing people, hostages, submarines, and any other clandestine operations in real time. He once did a reading and said we are, in fact, the extraterrestrials descendants from very tall beings who escaped Mars. But he also speaks of the original inhabitants of the planet Earth who have mastered how to stay hidden and who have a vast understanding of our world and universe. Managed to stay hidden from who and why. Many times craft we see or lights darting about the forest are the original Earthlings. I've heard many Bigfoot theories that also included moving, moving blue or various lights before or after they appear. What if Bigfoot are these original Earthlings? Also, McMoneagle also doesn't differentiate between the numerous paranormal supernatural Bigfoot of UFO topics. They're all the same to him. Thirdly, Tucker recently spoke about the supernatural, and he said something profound. Why is everything hidden from us? Why? What if we realize that all these things are true and we are a part of it? They are true, and we are a part of it. Without a doubt. What if we can control our world like the Bigfoot do? Switching between realities, mastering our consciousness, traveling anywhere, and manifesting anything we want. What if we already possess all the answers, we just have to unlock our potential? That's why releasing the truth about Bigfoot would be a big, a be, would be a game changer. We would understand our place and the elite of this world would no longer have power over us. Anyways, I think everything is connected. Consciousness is a big puzzle piece. As is frequency. Good luck, love your stuff, just some stuff to consider. All over it, absolutely agree. Now, how many people out there are going to start digging and looking into that? Right? But I'm uh, definitely on the same page. Steve. So I'm going to try not to comment too much today on the emails. I'm just going to let her rip and get as many voices heard as I can because I'm a little freaking tired right now. And I'm scared. I'm not going to. I'm not scared. But I'm, I might not make sense. Steve. My name is Dr. Pemberton, Doctor of Physical Therapy 2012. I listen to so many channels and podcasts like yours. I have a sound theory based on 70 plus books, the Bible, and channels like yours. I just want to lay it out for people to chew on because I haven't quite heard anyone say this theory. People jump to spirits or Nephilim, but I believe they are people. I believe they have insane spiritual abilities harnessed and practiced away from civilization. Everyone I tell my theory to, they tell me to get in touch with all sorts of channels and podcasts. I just need two to three hours 
of some time. Sorry, I just need two to three hours of someone's time, get vetted, and either there is something there or not. If there is someone you trust who could, who I could lay it all out to and could vet me, I'd be happy to oblige. The findings of these books answer everything from invisibility to flying to eating meat. Jay. Well, that sounds interesting. You know what? There's nothing stopping you from throwing it down on a, on a YouTube video yourself as well, right? Nothing at all. As an option. Maybe we could hook up, but I can't guarantee it will. If we could, it wouldn't be happening for a little while. Trust me, I've got, I'm, I'm booked so solid right now. And I have three or four podcasts that I have committed to and I have to get done. Yeah. Email me back again, but in the meantime... Try to throw it down. Set up a camera, let it rip, and throw it down on a YouTube channel, man. But email me again. Here's another one. Steve, I think I know what that is on June 7th, 24 posting. All right? Steve, don't share my name, please. You can call me Coaster on your postings on YouTube. I think that I know what that insect is on today's post titled... New local experiences for me and some odd photos sent in. Okay, hold on. That's just about that thing. Now, it's already been debunked, cleared up. There's a whole bunch of those created. And the person that sent, us to us, sent it to us is a bit of, is possibly a little loopy. <laughs> no big deal. Moving on. Thanks for sending that, man. But all good. We got it. We got it cleared up. This is from Cujo, our man-in-law, California. From Cujo, info on Griffith Park. Steve, I knew it was just a matter of time before someone wrote in about Griffith Park. That'll be about the woman that lost time, right? I attached a link to an article about the place. Supposedly, it is cursed. More about that in the article. I would never go there for recreation. It's only a couple miles from where I'm working. Estate security. In a nutshell, these are some of the disturbing things the park is known for. Kind of creepy since the middle of the greater... Kind of creepy since in the middle of the greater Los Angeles area. Even creepier that is close to my work. Murders, suicides, and bodies. Human remains are often found there. Dismembered bodies, skulls, skeletons, you name it. It's an obvious dumping ground for Los Angeles. Only real place in the city where you could bury a body and not have a found right away. The Manson family is connected to Griffith Park. I believe they squatted there for a while in the old zoo. The Hillside Strangler dumped bodies here, and several other notorious murders occurred in and around the park. Creepy. Ghosts. Suppos supposedly there is the ghost of a little girl who wanders the park looking for her parents that abandoned her there. Oh my god. Also, the ghost of a man is frequently seen around that merry-go-round. And the ghost of an actress who jumped from the H of the Hollywood sign is often seen in that same spot. Holy dark and dreary. And, you guessed it, Bigfoot. Really. Many reported sightings in Griffith Park. A lot of caves there that they could use along with the old abandoned L.A. Zoo. The two mountain lions I wrote to you about are seen there regularly as well. Also reports of a werewolf, a dogman, and other strangely described cryptid creatures. There's a lot more, I'm sure. But that's enough to keep me away. There's a quote from the head park ranger of Griffith Park in the article I attached. He said, If you knew some of the things we have found inside that park, you wouldn't set foot in there. Watch your six, buddy Cujo. Yeah, you watch yours too, man. I get time. Oh, there it is. The Cursed Tale of Griffith Park. The link. I clicked on it. Right in full view of the city, huh? All right. That's going to have to be for another time for me. Thanks for sending that in, man. Sounds like a creepy-ass place. Too much death. Too much dark. No, when you send me your next email, you send me a uh, Google Earth photo of it. All right, gotcha, man. Be careful out there, man. 
All right, who's next? The Stoned Moose. In 1963, I was at my grandparents' farm in Sydney, Maine for a spring break. The old farm, of 120 acres, had a colonial-era home with three outbuildings. The house was a post and beam construction with wood pegs joining huge timbers. Inside was where wood straps... Inside was where wood straps covered and plaster then painted. The well was rumored to be the deepest stone-lined hand-dug well in the surrounding counties. I loved it there. He had cows and Shetland slash Welsh ponies and lots from my young adventurous childhood. I enjoyed searching old buildings for hidden treasures, hunting and fishing in the Kennebec River nearby. Lots of wildlife had abundant encounters with rabbit, squirrels, deer, and an occasional black bear or moose. The latter I gave a wide berth, as my trusty twenty-two was not sufficient to protect me, much less harvest either, without the perfect lucky place shot. One day my travels found me at the rear of his property, in a mist of wild blueberry bushes and balsam fir, which had been encroaching along the black fence row for some five to ten years, sorry, around the back fence row for some five to ten years. I often found unsuspecting rabbits along the edges and was out on safari pretending to be a guide in Africa. I rounded a small I rounded a small bunch of fur and there stood a moose and a calf. She immediately came to alert and whirled to her to put herself between me and the calf. Then to my amazement she charged, striking my twenty two with front hooves leaving me defenseless. My only option was to was to tail to the fir trees, which I did, and scrambled up one about to about eight to ten feet. She was enraged and circled the tree. Adrenaline must have kicked in and she was intent on getting me. I hung on for dear life, needless to say. So there I was for the next thirty minutes, until I heard a twig snapping from near the edge of the fence row. To my amazement, out of nowhere, came a stone about the size of a golf ball toward the moose. It missed her completely and didn't detour her commitment. Then a second stone hit its mark and struck her in the rump. She whirled and returned to her baby some 20 feet away. Then a handful of gravel-sized stones sent them on their way. Grandpa, is that you? Thanks, I yelled. I got no answer. All I ever saw was a patch of red-brown hair, about eight feet up, moving away through the thicket on the neighbor's property. Holy shit. Knowing what I know now, I am sure that had it wanted to that thing... Hold on a minute. Knowing what I, what I know now, I am sure that had it wanted to, that thing could have pulled up a 25-foot tree and used it like a fly swatter but instead chose a few stones to do the deed. Some are good, some are evil. I thank God for the peaceful beings and wish them well. Twice I've had help. I told you about my colt in Tater Cave, and I'm pretty sure it was one of these beings then too. I don't know why, but somehow I seem to have had some kind of lifelong connection. Thanks, Steve. I finally found a place where I could share my experiences without being told that I was crazy. I appreciate and pray that you stay safe and free. You can share my name, Dave Abbott. I have only one. one I, sorry, I have only one more I will send soon. Okay, Dave, appreciate it, man. That sounds absolutely crazy, but it's not the first time somebody's wrote in about something large and hairy saving their ass from wildlife, right? That's so weird. So bizarre. You know, on the moose thing, so I don't know if many, most of you probably know, but one of the most dangerous things in the forest, in North America, probably in Russia too, Norway, wherever there's moose, it's the moose. The female cow moose has killed so many people. And um, a lot of snowmobilers get attacked for moose. They don't know any better because on the snowmobile trails in wintertime, the moose will congregate on there where they're wintering and walk along it or just stand on it. The sled trails, because it's easy, right? And I remember myself, a handful of years ago, I was going up the valley trapping wolves. All I had was a 243, which would kill a moose, though. And uh, I'm driving up the, the sled trail, and here's a bull moose standing on the sled trail. But he's about 
150 yards ahead of me. So I knew better. I'm slowly, slowly going along the, the snowmobile trail, the old logging road. And he's, his ears are laid out right away. He's pissed. He's like, yeah, leave me alone. And he starts walking farther up on the sled trail. I'm like, come on. And I can't get off. There's a cliff on the right. And it goes out to river on the left, but there's willow on both sides. He could have stepped off easy, but he stayed on the sled trail. And I'd, I'd move up a little bit. I'd rev my motor quite a bit, trying to scare him. And he's looking back at me, pissed off, starts walking away, walking away. And I'm starting to lose my patience because it's wintertime, it's short days, and I've got stuff i got to do. And I'm like, come on, get off the trail. So I'd get up a little closer to him, but not life-threatening close, I didn't think. And I'm revving the motor on the sled, and he's looking looking a little more angry, and then finally he's like, screw you, turns around and comes flying straight at me as fast as he could run, ears back and drool and snot flying out of his nose and mouth. And he come up going like, they, they always come at you, once they get near you, they start trying to strike you with their front feet. So here he is flailing his front feet, his, his hoofs at, my, at me, at my snowmobile, I'm panicking, trying to get off, because once you get off the compact sled trail, you start sinking in the deep snow. So I shoot to my left, and I got myself around a, a thick uh, cottonwood tree, cottonwood or alder, whatever was there. And he came flying up the tree, and I had to keep that tree between me and him for freaking, I don't know how long, dodging around, right? I didn't want to shoot him. And I didn't have to shoot him, and eventually he got pissed off and went that way. Thank God. But anyway, I'm just saying, you ever run into a, a moose with a calf? Or a moose on a trail where it can't pull off, be careful. They're going to try to kill you. That's interesting, though. What an interesting tale. What's this one? Not for share. Okay, skipping over you then. What's this one? This is titled A Theory to a question that bothers me and you. The question, how is man able to hunt down and kill the forest people when they outclass us so much in the forest area? First, we want you to know that this theory comes from the important evidence the encounters you read on your channel have presented to me and all the listeners. Let's talk about Dogman. According to the encounter stories you've read, Dogman has the same talents and abilities as Sasquatch. With that in mind, let's get to the theory. Do you remember the story of the man that shot Dogman but didn't kill him? Later to find him at his new apartment and tell him when the time comes, you are the first I will kill, along with other stories that have said basically Dogman gets a kick out of scaring the hell out of us humans. This shows me that they, Dogman, don't like us much. Let's remember a story you told not too long ago. Do you recall the story about the truck driver that was being chased by Dogman? He ended the chase shooting and killing Dogman. Now, do you remember the statement that the man who came up to his truck said? I've had this statement on the back shelf in my mind since then. The statement was, you killed my asset, or you killed our asset. My question is, asset for what? My thought is, humans can hunt humans quite successfully in most cases. Unless, sorry. My thought is, humans can hunt humans quite successfully in most cases. Unless you're a great woodsman or highly trained military person. Only in these cases would you have to call on your asset, a dogman, to help with the search. What if you wanted to hunt Sasquatch? You would use this asset that has equal ability to Sasquatch himself. As you know, there is no love lost between Sasquatch and Dogman. I make this statement because of some of the mind speak stories from the past, where the Sasquatch has been asked about Dogman. Well, that's all I got. Short to the point, as best as I could. Thanks, Steve from Michigan. Yeah, I don't know. It sounds out there. Possible? I guess so. I've never seen a human being accompanying a dog man in my life, and I've never heard of a human being handling or training or hunting with a dog man in my life. 
I don't think we have any eyewitness reports of a dog man chasing down and murdering a Sasquatch. Sounds right frickin' out there. I know, doesn't it? Is it possible? Oh, I think it, basically everything's possible these days, right? But there's just, there is not even a half a pattern among the people pointing in that direction here. Not yet. We have a few people that have said they shot one of these beings. No photos. No nothing. We have a lot of people dictating to us, telling us, the Sasquatch and dogmen are mortal enemies. Show me the human being right now that comes here. Email me right now. If you are one of those human beings that has dictated to us that dogman and Sasquatch hate each other. Where's your receipts? Who told you this? Are you just an echo or a parrot? What are you doing? Are you repeating words you've heard on the internet? I don't know. Somebody give me some solid frickin' info on these two beings quarreling, killing each other, being used as humans as an asset. You know what I mean? I know I'm not being a dick. I know sometimes my tone, the way I talk, might come across as aggressive, but there's a lot of fragile people out there these days, right? <laughs> um, I'm dead up. I'm just shooting straight up, right? Well, let's hear. Let's hear from somebody who isn't repeating what they heard, right? We have the majority of people on here are eyewitness, firsthand experiencers. They share what they saw, what they know, with their eyes and their ears. So let's hear from some of those people that may be experienced in what you just threw down. And we'll see. But so far, zip, zero for me. Ooh, here's a long one. All right. Well, you know, one thing about people sending in long ones, that's a big effort. And you got to give them respect just for that. Info on what is being done to humanity. All right, here we go. Steve, one of the posts I recently watched discussed how many of our natural abilities have been suppressed. I have information, excuse me, that I have included in this email that will help verify some of the methods that are utilized to accomplish this. Below is a bullet point list with just some of the tactics used by those who seek to keep us dumbed down. I've also included some suggestions regarding how to minimize the impact of some of these attacks. All right, I'm in, let's go. Before I get into the specific items, I would like to describe the process I use to decide if I believe a source to be valid or not. All righty. Number one, if it from any of the mainstream media, MSM channels, it is automatically considered to be false or deceptive. Agreed. Number two. Four published papers, most of those from major universities, should be viewed with a great deal of suspicion. I often look at the primary authors and do some research on their names. If they are the head of a department or holding a position such as director or senior, I will pass over anything they have written. Agreed. People, people do not reach senior positions in any organization that has the ability to influence the public without being under control of the deep state. Agreed. Younger members of an organization or those from lesser known facilities should be given more consideration regarding the possibility of being true. Another indication that I have noticed is that the papers that hold views that are contrary to those pushed by the DS or MSM can only be found way down on the list of articles listed by the search engine. Number three, any source that is found on social media is immediately suspect, yours included. It takes some time to review their content in order to come to a determination as to whether or not I consider them to be providing valid information. The methods you have utilized, reading information sent in by viewers without judgment, allowed me to place you into the trustworthy list. Appreciate that. If I see warning signs, such as offering a product to combat whatever they are speaking about, it is an automatic indication that they should not be trusted. There you go. Number four, there are certain sources that I have previously vetted whose content I will usually accept without question. 
If I do encounter something from one of these sources that seems questionable, I will research this subject on my own. On the few times I've felt the need to do this, I've arrived at the same conclusion as my source. Number five, gut feeling and common sense. This is somewhat self-explanatory. If something I look over gives me an unusual feeling or just doesn't seem right, I'll usually set it aside until such time as I can validate the information provided. All the following subjects have been subjected to my validation process described above. Fluoride. My extensive research into fluoride has produced no sources that I accept as valid, which indicate that fluoride should be added to our water or applied to our teeth. While there are some sources that indicate that fluoride may help strengthen teeth, <laughs> these sources also indicated that the risks of fluoride toxicity, especially in younger people, outweighs the potential benefit. Pretty sure that eating healthy solves all. The fluoride that is used in toothpaste and in water is sodium fluoride. This type of fluoride cannot be excreted by the human body without placing extreme strain on the kidneys. Wow. People who have kidney disease are especially susceptible to problems with this type of fluoride and often die from fluoride toxicity. Scream that up from the mountaintops. should be noted that the sodium fluoride that is added to our toothpaste and water was originally used for rat poison. The natural form of fluoride is calcium fluorophosphate. The type of fluoride, this type of fluoride, fluoride, does strengthen teeth and bones and is easily expelled from the body. I've also found several sources that stated that there is very little evidence that any amount of fluoride is beneficial to our teeth or our health. Another interesting item I found during my research about fluoride was a discussion on how fluoride protects our teeth. This process involves antibacterial and antimicrobial effects which help eliminate some of the microorganisms that contribute to tooth decay and, and gum disease. As I re researched this information, I came across an article about mouthwash. It seems that many of the various mouthwash products were, were originally used in treatments to resolve toenail and foot fungus. I became curious how these products went from treating our feet to being put into our mouths. I found more information about this while watching an interview with a source that a place a fair degree of trusted. Sorry, typo. I found more information about this while watching an interview with a source that I place a fair degree of trust in. The person he was interviewing had already spoken on a few subjects that I had previously acquired proof on. So I was giving them a certain amount of consideration that what they were speaking of was valid. This person indicated that a research project they had done had shown a strong correlation between use of mouthwash and hypertension. Their research indicated that mouthwash kills all the natural flora in our mouth, some of which creates nitrous oxide. Nitrous oxide is one of the naturally occurring chemicals that help keep blood pressure in the normal range. I'd read about the connection between nitrous oxide and blood pressure previously, and it already eliminated mouthwash from my daily routine. I brushed my teeth shortly after eating, using non-fluoride toothpaste, and I rinsed my mouth out with warm water. My wife has assured me that she will let me know if my breath is unacceptable. LOL. <laughs> so far, she's not, she has not given me any, any indication that she feels like she is kissing something that has been eating dead animals that have sat in the sun for a few days. <laughs> My advice on how to avoid the problems associated with fluoride is to eliminate fluoride toothpaste. For water, well water, is one of the better methods of keeping fluoride from your water. Bottled water, tap water, etc. all have fluoride added to them. There are a few products that can effectively filter out fluoride from water. And many of these result in water with higher levels of soft metals which contribute to a variety of mental disease processes associated with reduced cognitive abilities. If well water is not available, distilled water from a vitamin or mineral supplement may be used. Again, distilled water purchased from a store is suspect and is almost certainly not pure as distilled water 
you may get home. It should be noted that the distillation process removes all vitamins and minerals from the water, thus removing any of the health benefits from the water. That is why you should consider adding some form of supplement to the water before you drink it. I am still looking for a good supplement at this time. I cannot offer a suggestion for what product to add to your water. Mind control. There's a lot of information on techniques utilized by the governments of the world to keep the population under control. Most of these processes stem from a program known as MK Ultra. This program is utilized to achieve a variety of different levels of control over people. At the low end are techniques to keep people from utilizing independent thinking processes by keeping them locked into media that feeds the darker side of our nature or software that rewards short-term gains over those that encourage independent thought processes. These low-end programs keep most people satch- satiated, I think it saturated to the point where they simply stop questioning what is going on around them. <laughs> no doubt. On the other end of the spectrum lies the trauma-based programs that cause a person's personality to fracture, making them susceptible to mental programming that can turn them into assassins or terrorists. The best method of combating the low-end mind control processes is to shut off the television and read a good book. Put down your smartphone or iPad. Use an old flip phone. You really do not need to waste much time playing mind-numbing games that mean nothing for hours on end. Do you really believe that playing these games provides you with any benefit? You can state that it is fun to do, but fun can come in a wide variety of forms, many of which provide the players with real benefits that cannot be gleaned from so many of the games found on computers, phones, and iPads. It should also be noted that there is a direct proven correlation between the mental capabilities of youth who read a lot and those who do not. The young readers almost always demonstrate higher degrees of intelligence than those who do not read very often. Another possible method of reducing the effect of. Sorry. Another aspect of the mind control equation is the influence on the mental processes of humans from cell towers, televisions, and computer monitors. Both our bodies and our brains respond to frequencies from the world around us by emitting inaudible low frequencies, which are kept in a physical state of fatigue and our mind's ability to focus is kept dampened. While it is possible to minimize our exposure to computer monitors and television, it is difficult to reduce the exposure from cell towers. Physical poisoning, beyond the fluoride I mentioned previously, we are being subjected to a huge amount of poisons on a daily basis. These poisons are present in our food, our water, our air, and numerous products we use in our daily lives. This is probably the most difficult type of negative effect for us to avoid. Where possible, I will include any techniques that have been demonstrated that have been demonstrated success in reducing the amount of poisons we are subject to. I'll say, I mean, for me, there's a war on humanity in our face going on 24-7, without a doubt. Food, first and foremost. Avoid processed foods whenever possible. No-brainer. But unfortunately, it's pretty tough for a lot of people. Anything that comes in a processed form is full of poisons. The list of processed foods includes just about everything that is not a fruit or a vegetable. Foods that have higher sugar content are especially deadly to us. Some examples of pre-processed foods include, but are not limited to, the following. <clears throat> Excuse me. Milk, juice, butter, cheese, yogurt, soup, cereal, condiments, bread, cookies, crackers, chips, meat of almost all kinds. Almost everything in frozen food in the frozen food section. Ice cream, frozen desserts. Well, you should get the idea by now. Regarding fruits and vegetables, most of these have been coated by toxic substances. This includes those that are labeled as organic. Any fruit or vegetable should be washed before it's consumed. Basically, the only way you can eat or drink without consuming these poisons is to consume products that you have grown yourself. 
buy your meats, fruits, and vegetables directly from ranchers and farmers who sell directly to the public. Water. The problems with fluoride in water were discussed above. Bottled water contains additional toxins as it is easier to add to the bottled water than it is to the general water supply. Air. For years, chemtrails have poured poisons into the air. Chemtrails contain numerous metals that suppress the immune system and cause neurologic diseases that impair cognitive function. I've heard, but have not been able to verify, that the chemtrail with the poisons have recently been stopped and replaced with contents that have been designed to reverse some of the effects caused by the ones with toxins in them. Household products. Almost everything we use around the home has toxic materials added to them. This is especially true regarding any product that is applied to our skin. Soaps, shampoos, conditioners, sunscreens, hand lotions, makeup, and anything else you can think of that you apply to your skin. These toxins, the toxins added to these products are designed to suppress the immune system. This leads to cancer and various other autoimmune diseases. Additional products used around the house that contains toxins include items such as laundry and dish detergents, air fresheners, cleaning products, etc. Any product that is scented contains higher levels of these toxins. As you can see, our daily lives have been designed to expose us to a constant level of poisons that are designed to weaken us and cause a wide variety of health problems. Excuse me. The worst one of all. Of all the poisons that we are subjected to, there is one that is by far the most dangerous of all. This is a substance called graphene oxide. Graphene oxide was originally produced by applying a piece of tape to a block of graphene or graphite. When the tape is removed, a layer of graphene will be present on the tape. If this layer is subjected to another piece of tape and this process is repeated, you will eventually end up with a layer of graphene that is one molecule thick. If you could picture a matrix of graphene molecules that is depth and width that is only one molecule th thick, then you'll have a good idea of what graphene oxide is. The danger of this substance is how it can be used. Graphene oxide can be added to literally any product. It can be sprayed into the air, added to water or any food slash drink without any indication that it is present. Scientists, under the direction of our government, developed a process that allows the graphene oxide molecules to be controlled remotely. What? Once graphene oxide is inside your body, this substance will join with any other molecules of the same type to start forming larger molecular structures. Once enough of these molecules join together, they begin to form structures that thanks to the aforementioned scientists, can act just like a remotely accessed computer network. Specific fre frequencies can be utilized to provide instructions regarding what they are to do. An example of this is that the graphene oxide can be instructed to vibrate to the point where enough heat is generated that tissue in the area is damaged or destroyed. Here comes a loud boat. There it goes. All right. An example of this is that, the, is that the graphene... Sorry, I read that. Now, here's the really scary part. Graphene oxide is small enough to pass through the blood-brain barrier. Once it does that, it can form into the larger structures where absolutely horrendous damage can be inflicted using the remote access process I described. People can be killed by stroke or heart attack. This functionality was tested in Wuhan, China, early in the CB pandemic. You may recall that people were dropping dead on the streets in Wuhan in the early days of the pandemic. This was not due to CV, but was the result of early testing of using graphene oxide to murder people by way of signals sent through cell towers, radios, cell phones, or pretty much any device that can send signals. Once graphene oxide is present in the body, it takes months for it to be expelled. This assumes that you are not being exposed to additional amounts of graphene oxide. 
I've been provided with information that indicates that steps have been taken to halt the release of graphene oxide, though I cannot confirm if the release of this toxin has been completely halted. I hope, I pray that it has. This is all I have for now. If you have any questions regarding any of the information I have provided, please feel free to send a return email. I would thoroughly enjoy having a long conversation with you sometime. I have some wild experiences in my life, including a UFO encounter at extremely close range, as well as an encounter with the spirit of an Indian shaman who attacked a friend of mine. Thank you for all your efforts, and keep up the good fight. Holy, you've been doing some digging, and I appreciate you uh, being the messenger and sounding off the top of the mountain. It was a big effort and a lot of time you've been spending, and there's not much there you can argue with you about, right? Look into it, you guys. Look into it. You know, sugar is, I think sugar has been deemed as a toxic substance for human bodies. <laughs> and if you go look at where sugar is, especially when it comes to the children, right? What do you, what, what happens when you walk down the cereal aisle in any grocery store? Oh my God. What's that other dog shit? Nutella? Seriously? Has anybody read the frickin' ingredients on that dog shit? I know lots of my friends that feed that to their kids. What are you doing? Sugar's nasty. Very, very, very nasty. Everything you mentioned is nasty. And there's, it's not just doom and gloom, though, you guys. I mean, there's, there's a bright light all around it. Right now, currently, we are still doing the uh, the meat diet. Sarah's felt the best she's probably ever felt. Me? I feel pretty good. I'm just tired. <laughs> but I'm, I should be tired of what I'm doing. But I have lots of energy. I'm still doing what I'm doing. No problem at all. I jump up in the morning and I go do my day. And we've just been eating meat. It's crazy. Meat, meat products. We've absolutely eliminated sugar. I still drink coffee. <sniffs> Whatever. But anyway, I'm going to stop babbling. I'm going to stop babbling. I got to go through my inbox. I have to find, you know what I think I might do, you guys? I think I might, I should probably make a separate email just for my one-on-one -on -one conversations on video, I'll call it, podcast, whatever you want to call it. I should probably do that because there's a lot of people, obviously, a lot of people get lost in the mix as I'm reading along because every single day I'm just trying to get people heard and I go, 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 and it's endless. And I know I'm, I, I'm, I don't have guilt, guilt, but I do, I just feel bad for the amount of people that, especially now, this far along in the game, as I realize how much courage it actually takes for the majority of the people out there to uh, throw down their truth. Because first off, they don't like to re relive it. They are terrified of ridicule. It scares the shit out of them. It causes them nightmares for who knows how long. And they don't want to relive those nightmares. But they still have that urge to share it and, and let their truth be known. You know, instead of harboring it inside all the time. And I feel for those people, and I really need to make sure I get them heard. So what I'm saying is, I lose a lot of these people that I think, oh shit, I really want to have a conversation with that person and share that conversation with all of you. And I lose them. Whoops, ran out of battery. <clears throat> Whoops, ran out of battery. But anyways, I lose them. And I wish I didn't. But it's tough. If I do make that email, you guys got to not not torment me on there. You know what I mean? I, I should almost, if I make that email to make sure the people I need to have a conversation with contact me there, and if anybody else contacts me there, I should just automatically delete the email from that email inbox without even looking at it. Maybe I could do that. I don't know. Throw down what you think in the comment section below, maybe. But I really, uh, I really, it bothers me that I lose a lot of people that I really want to go back and talk to. But I'll find them. I'll find them. Anyways, I'm gonna get moving. I'm pretty tired right now. I'm, I hope I, uh, I hope I made sense today. If not, oh well. Tomorrow I might. <laughs> I'm looking forward to getting home already. But I've got, uh, geez, I got three days to go, three full days to go before I can go home. And then I am going to do one, two, three conversations to share with all of you. 
and then I will go and look into going into the woods to get this done. Get it done. Go speak with, hear from, or whatever's going to go down so that I can relay and share everything that I learned with all you guys to put a bunch of shit to rest and hopefully get us enlightened, right? Anyway, there we go. Share my story at howtohunt.com. I've been putting the links for everything underneath the description. So, Sarah's store for decals and stuff, decals, stickers, quality vinyl stickers for the club in a return are in her store, which is the link is below in the video description. The backup channel, in case they boot me off here, especially for some of the shit I just shared today, right? That link, the backup channel link is in the description below. What else is in there? Mm-mm-mm. That's about it, right? The email, Sarah Store, and the backup channel. There you go. I'll be back tomorrow. I gotta shut my mouth. I'm so tired. No big deal. I'll be back tomorrow.